On them back roads where the alligators crawl in the swamp land, we ain't worried about no law. You can find me in the woods with my dogs under pine trees in the land of a law. If you would do me a favor, because yeah, I kind of remember the story that you told me about reality hits. And if my memory serves me correct, when we were talking today on the phone, you said that that song is actually about one of your friends who took their own life. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So, um, but you did change cousin... you did change the song where because in, in real life he didn't do what you said in the song, no. No, no. But you no, said that you um, did that because it's more modern today versus when you were in high school. It's what happens nowadays more than anything. Yeah. When so people... if you wouldn't if you wouldn't mind, could you tell that story? Because I told him I said you got to listen to what's going on in this story. Of this song, you may hear it, but if you're not listening to it, you're not gonna you're not gonna get it. And so I think that I think I, that thing needs to get out there. When I wrote "Reality Hits," I wrote it um, in regards to bullying. Um, I'm a huge. I've always been against bullying because of this reason here. <clears throat> so me and my cousin G uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, we were probably about <laughs> anywhere between the age of ten, thirteen, somewhere in that area. Um, maybe a little bit younger, nine, something like that. We had a really good friend of ours, uh, especially G. He was really, really close to him. Um, but we hung out with him every day at school, stuff like that. And uh, gangs were really bad in, in our neighborhood that we grew up in Jacksonville. And they just kept pushing and pushing and pushing him and everything else to, to join the gang and stuff like that. And long story short, instead of doing like most kids do nowadays and – me like yo i can't take it anymore i'm gonna come after you guys and i'm gonna end this because i'm done being bullied he uh had taken another route and we had lost him and i don't want to put too many details out there about how he was found and everything else but his law his life was taken and it was because of the gangs you know, and I can't say it was a specific gang or what it was, but it was a group of individuals that were just pushing him to do something that he didn't want to do. And unfortunately, we lost him. And I know in today's world with bullying that it would have been completely different. It would have been exactly as the song says it is. And that's the, the bully being taken out. And with the first verse, I felt like he had been through so much that he understood what pain was because they had beaten him and broken his ribs and after he had taken their lives all that came into him because he just soaked it all up every day just hit after hit and then finally he just let it all out with with his hits and then at the end of it he realized like man what have i done i did the same thing except instead of just hurting these people i hurt myself and everyone that loves them and and then that's when the darkness fell into him where he was like, I can't live like this. I can't do this. And so that's when he jumps off of the bridge and he takes his own life. And if you listen closely, I'll follow you. So in, in most scenarios, when people say they're going to do something with you, they're going to jump off of a bridge with you. Or they're going to um, take this medication with you when they're you know, taking their own lives and stuff like that. Things that they're done together. But if you listen to the message in the song, he says, I'll follow you when you fall. So it's basically him saying, like, you're going to do this, but I'm not going to with you. I'm going to make you do this. You know, this is I'm the negative energy and I'm going to make you do this because that's my job to make you feel this way. But I'm not doing it. You're doing it. I'm going to watch you fall, but I'm going to make you think I'm going to follow you. And then the second verse uh, I discussed um, a young woman who uh, her mother was very big drunk and, and she couldn't deal with her at a younger age. And the father um, was left, in, you know, to take control of her life and, and try to raise her himself. But he was also spinning out of control as well. And she dealt with it for 16 years of him yelling at her, cussing at her, beating her, treating her the same way he treated her mother while her mother left and everything else. And she responded back in the in the same way as the young kid who was being bullied because she was being bullied but in a different way and she's like i can't take it anymore so she ended up um taking his life and if you listen real close i mentioned 
the 16, you know, stabs for every year you hit me till I cried because it was a way of painting the picture of like she put up with this for 16 years of her life. And it just shows for, there's a lot of people out there and it, that are going through this every day. And I think the reason why I called it reality hits was because I wanted them to realize if they heard this and they're going through that, that at the end of it all, murder, suicide, or any of that is only going to bring you more hurt because at the end of it, reality is going to hit. It's going to hit you. It's going to hit everyone around you and anybody that was involved in the incident. And I feel like this song painted the picture perfectly for, for bullies. And for especially young women, young girls going through this scenario or situation. And uh, I don't know, man, there's like there's a true story behind all of it, but I'm not going to put people's details into it. But just know that everything that we write about, I write about is real stuff. There's real life facts behind it. But to protect others, I'm, as an artist, you're allowed to switch things around and paint a picture. A little bit better for others and without hurting people but still get the message out there with clear content and be respectful to situations that you are a part of um and i feel like this song did it and that's why i called it reality hits because at the end of it all it's reality it's real it really happened and it really happens every day and i've seen it with my own eyes and i'm sure many of you have and i tell people all the time it's not who's been through the worst who's been through worse or how long they went through it it's about how we come out of it at the end of it all, how strong we are through it and how much we learn from it. And I feel like reality hits the title, the name, the message, the hook, all of it was perfect. And uh, yeah, it's it's all real facts, man. You know, there's there was nothing that we could do to help him because at that point he had already been through so much dealing with it that it became a situation that he didn't know how to control anymore. And nobody knows the true facts behind everything 100% because we weren't there. And it's like Triple T always says, there's two sides to every story. And the truth is in the middle. So, you know, but I appreciate y'all allowing me to share the testimony and the story behind that song and the message to Reality Hits. Because I feel like it is probably one of my most powerful songs, if not darkest and controversial of all of the music that I've written recently. So... Most definitely, man. Appreciate you sharing that with us, cause, like I said, just cause you can hear it, if you're not listening, it's totally two different things. And yeah, we I, talked I about that that day, man. Yeah, <laughs> I really wanted them to listen to the lyrics of it, because, like you said, that's that's what's going on in our society today with troubled teens, and you know, with the suicide rate and the abuse rate that's going on across this country, and that song really. I mean, I gravitated towards that song so deeply that I, I love it. It's definitely on my playlist. I can tell you that. I, I mean, knew that, I knew that if if I had if I'd have been around Boss in, in Tennessee and stuff, the video would have probably been a dynamic video and a great story to go with it. But I didn't have that capability to do a video like that. But I knew I needed to get a video out there, and I wanted it to be a lyric video too. So I found a way to film myself and give it the image of me being on top of the world mm -hmm. with the world below me so i'm speaking to, like i felt like i was talking to everybody yeah and, most definitely and uh i feel like it, it it painted the picture for me and it's doing very well man it's at a thousand thousand views in a month so thank you so much to everybody that's helped make that happen it means the world to me because for me to see numbers like that y'all have no idea like it just it blows my mind man it blows my mind and I owe it all to everybody, um, and especially Outlaw Nation. But like Boss says, I owe it all to myself, too. And I'll never forget that. I always try to be humble and supportive of everybody. But he always makes sure, man, don't you forget that you're, it's because of you. It's not because of me. It's because of you. Don't forget that. And so, yep. you know, I appreciate everybody, man. It means so much. Thank you. That is 1K, man, in a month. That's crazy. Yeah, compared to some of your stuff from the past. Like I said, yeah. Whatever after hostage, keep emulating exactly what you're doing. You I said if you do, your numbers are gonna grow. And I'm just saying I, I don't know everything, but I know a little something. I believe your numbers have grown. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh man, significantly. Just it's it's amazing watching it. And like I said, I'm so close to getting monetized. Um, and I want to do a giveaway. Uh, just everything that's been going on, I haven't been able to do a giveaway for hitting 1K, but now we're about to hit 2K. So mm -hmm. I think I'm just gonna do a giveaway for 2K once everything gets settled down, and uh, we get in a nice permanent place. But uh, it's definitely. Definitely a significant change in the career path, man. Well, if you don't mind, could you tell the story? Because um, you you presented hostage to uh, read it, read his husband, correct? No. So, okay, the story behind. Uh, no, I'm talking about where wasn't it Rita's husband who told you to slow it down? Oh yeah. So it was New Year's Eve. We were doing the show in North Carolina. Y'all got to hear and, this story. It's amazing. <clears throat> so it was New Year's Eve, and uh, it was me, uh, Miss Rita Smith, and uh, Cajun, <clears throat> which is Randall Smith. That's easy, brother. Um, it was New Year's Eve. We just got done doing the show in North Carolina, and uh, I didn't have a place to stay at that time. I did. I had a place. I could have stayed anywhere I wanted to at any of uh, Outlaw Nation members and stuff like that, but um, Rita and uh, Randall offered me a place to stay in the room in the apartment, and me and Randall sat there. And for those of you who didn't know any of this, uh, Randall is a, a songwriter, um, musician, and so he completely opened up to me. I mean, we sat there for probably four or five hours, man, New Year's night, just sitting there after the show talking and discussing music and songs that he'd wrote and some of the most beautiful songs man the lyrics in them were so powerful i think it was called a single tear or the last tear or something he wrote i have to get with miss rita and get a copy of it because i want to hang it up in my studio but um we had sat there and we were talking about it and he was like really i just want to be real with you um i think you're an awesome artist uh you're definitely on the right team on the right path but you're such a fast rapper that I don't think anybody has had the opportunity to really listen to you yet. I think that if you were to slow it down and get it to where they can listen to you and actually hear you at least one time, just once, that everything from there on out, they will be able to understand and they will listen to you and hear you. And uh, I told him, I said, you know what, man, my wife has been telling me that for years. And that's why I've always uh, looked, told him, you know, I've always looked forward to doing lyric videos for people because I'm a chopper. I grew up listening to Tech Nine, um, Twista, you know, Busta Rhymes, Bone Thugs and Harmony, all the real fast chopping artists and everything. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Ritz and Joyner Lucas. And, and I told him these things. And, uh, and I was like, you know, even Boss Chops, Boss Chop to Forgive. Um, there's a lot of songs that Boss Chops in. And, uh, I told him, you know, I just can't help it sometimes. It's like I told my wife, I just can't help it. It's like I just got to I gotta get those syllables and that cadence going. He was like, just slow down one time for me. One time, and I, I promise you they're going to listen. And uh, that was it, man. I, I took his advice, and uh, when I heard Hostage, I wrote it fast. Like, I wanted to chop so bad because I was like, awesome, my first song I'm doing in the Outlaw Nation studio. Uh new breed you know he, he he's actually in here with me he he made the beat he's gonna be mixing it this is gonna be great you know i gotta make sure this is on point spectacular so i wrote it and then as as we're, we're tracking it me and boss go to track it i'm sitting there and i'm like it's clicking in my head i'm like man boss hold on hold on hold on i think i think i need to slow this down man for some reason i just feel like i need to slow down a little bit let me try this different and uh slowed it down and it just flowed perfectly everything just came the way it was supposed to be meant to be and afterwards boss was like man everything goes to it so perfectly it's just, it's it's perfect it was like this song was made for you to write this these lyrics too and uh ever since then everybody's been listening to me and hearing me <laughs> it's crazy before i was just spitting you know and now I can spit as fast as I want, as slow as I want, or whatever cadence I want. And um, everybody is truly listening to me and actually hears me now. So uh, That's what I told you on the phone that day. 
Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's it's a blessing though. Uh, and and rest easy to Cajun too, man. He was a he was a Most really definitely. good, Most definitely. really good man. A very big supporter of 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 any artist really that really believed in themselves. But a huge a huge uh, impact on all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely me, New Year's Night. Um, and if I ever get a chance to get a copy of that song he wrote, I will definitely let you hear it. But um, That'd be yeah, awesome. man. And then Dirty just uh right after um, right after uh Randall passed and everything, Dirty did uh, River Full of Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just a lot of songs that were probably from conversations with Cajun that were inspired, you know. Uh well he was on he was on with me probably about two weeks ago and he dropped a bombshell on us and said that he's gonna be dropping 30 songs back to back. And I'm like, whoa, what? I said, come on man, you gotta give me a couple of weeks notice because <laughs> I mean Dirty's is one of a kind. But he said he's got over a hundred songs that he wants to get out over the next six months. I was like, good lord. Man, pump the brakes. Put these in, you know, put 10 EP albums out. You got 10 albums you can put out right there. You don't just don't every drop day, them all at once. Day, you know what I'm saying? Every day there's a song being written. I guarantee it. Oh, every yeah. Day. I guarantee He's writing it. right now. Um, I guarantee you. Shout out to Dirty because I know you're probably watching and listening to the <laughs> background. Uh, love and salute to bro, man. I'm, so right, uh, I'm writing one right now. Nobody's heard. Uh, I haven't even mentioned it to Boss or anything yet because I have a feeling that Boss is going to want to get on it. I'm hoping. But it's called Whack, and uh, it's um, it's basically about how no matter the how many doctors I went to, they were all quacks. They didn't understand me. Um, it was just it was whack. Everything they were saying to me was whack, and it's about being crazy mentally, you know, and, and really mm-hmm. being crazy and and not faking the funk. Actually having paperwork on it, stating like, look, I got a mental issue, and this is how I feel about certain things. And so I feel like it's going to hit people on a mental health level because uh, I'm a big supporter of mental health. Oh, Dirty yeah, is too. Good. That's why we wrote Black Hole. Um, Black Hole was uh, written when my wife went into the hospital. I wrote uh, the hook to Black Hole and uh, I went to Dirty's that weekend. Me and Dirty did Black Hole, Waiting on June. Well, we did Waiting on June, Black Hole, uh, Pull Up, and uh, I did uh, Gunplay. We did four songs that weekend and two music videos that weekend. And so that just goes to show you Dirty's work ethic. <laughs> so right, he's, he's him, definitely a workhorse. Him having 100 songs ain't no surprise. <laughs> he's definitely a workhorse, without a doubt. Man, that is crazy. Well, look, man, I appreciate you coming up here and chopping it up with me tonight. But uh, it's midnight. Oh, yeah. I got to get ready for work. Still got to oh, get I appreciate out there and do that you guys, nine to five. Man. Always appreciate everybody, especially the whole Triple T family, Dogtown family. Um, you guys are one of the main reasons why we get where we get and we're able to rise up because of the shares, the love and the support. And, you know, we're just grateful for everything that you guys give us. Even, even, and it's just like with the soldiers, you know, the little yellow ribbons mean so much. So when you see somebody with an Outlaw Nation sticker or, or keychain or anything like that, it's the, it's the same, same love, the same response. We just appreciate y'all. And especially you, Triple T, because you've been like a big uncle to all of us, man. Like, just you always keep it real that, too. I, I yeah, you keep that. it real too. If you got to be hard, you got to be hard. You know, it's uh, it's like we said in the military: what take the hard right over the easy wrong. That's it. And, I, <laughs> and I've said this to you, and over the phone, I said it to you face to face, and I've said it online. It's not that I didn't like your music from the past but you were going way too fast for me to understand it right but once you took randall's advice and you brought it down a notch like you said all it needs to take people to listen to it one time and once they get it they're gonna they're gonna come back because they're gonna understand and and i said it's true whatever you're doing whatever you've done emulate it don't change it <laughs> and you have it you have not changed it you have not you keep emulating it and man i'm just so proud how far you have progressed in the short time i've known you i've known you now almost two years um yeah 
you you definitely come a long way a very long way thanks brother thanks i mean the so first much, time man. i met you was in sparta and yep i was like uh yeah, I, all right because me and mikey we every time we go to the show when we get in the truck and we get riding back to his house we'll sit there and we'll break down the whole concert and we basically critique all y'all's performances and that right. first that, that first part of the show i was like what do you think about what's that guy's name he's like who i said the guy with the because you had a, a funky haircut back then and oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was everywhere with, with those mismatch socks and i i don't know what's his name <laughs> he's like you know mike i don't know okay oh, you know man. what i'm talking about right he's like yeah i said what do you think of him he's like honestly <laughs> i couldn't understand what he was saying i said me neither so i was like okay yeah just that time chop, you were chop, just chop. affiliated with him but back then it was yeah. you big cat and koi right yeah me big cat koi and uh mikey adrian yeah um, uh, Adrian raps yep and Ad- the only adrian actual was, members uh, were were uh at the spark event was new breed jesse your boy dirty and odr yep those were 100 percent yeah members but it's crazy you, man because i remember you, you were doing interviews with everybody and i was like man one day i'm gonna do an, an interview i'm gonna get get able to do a real interview face to face with these guys and uh so this is actually one of our closest interviews that we've had so far mm-hmm. but i i see in the future we're gonna get us a real one. Oh yeah most down. definitely next next event i come down we're gonna have one that's a, that's a given that's a given but that's before you go it, before you go i am going to play flush oh yeah i love that song man this one it's doing extremely well man uh, almost 23k so that and that's on my channel so to me that it being on my channel it, it, it just it, it blows my head off man i'm just like how it's god man this is this is god that's all i got to say it's all god <laughs> exactly so right now god's playing god's hands where we at 20 22,861 yeah, yeah 1,590 some k subs so yeah all right folks loving it now i'm really peaching your boy dirty and flush you gotta listen to this one you just can't hear it. You got to listen to it. Let's get it. Let me explain 
Please, I know it's what you think it. I'm the bad guy that everybody hates, but you just don't know my demons. Before I started selling these drugs to you, I had dreams of making it out. Cause when I was born, it was fucking hell, and the devil lived in my house. He would come in my room late at night when me and my sister would sleep. And after he had his way with her, it was my turn to get beat. So I swore to her that I would get us out, no matter what I had to do. Even if it meant that I had to sell this poison to you. So I got jumped into a local game before I even turned 13. Started riding around with my big homies and doing shit in the street. I, I was so scared, I was so lost, but there was no way to let it show. Cause they said they would kill my little sister if I don't sell this dope. So now I'm too far in and it's too late. What the hell is she gonna do? Either we both die cause I can live without her or I sell this shit to you. I ain't a bad person, but I had a bad life and I ain't asking for justice. Just a friendly neighborhood D-boy and if you ask me, you should have flushed it. These pieces of my soul just want more bubble and roll and play. They keep me up in wide awake while the rest of the world sleeps. Then the hardest thing to do is quit. Spinning out this train, I know what they're gonna say. I should have flushed it. Should have blushed it. These pieces of my soul just want more bubble and roll and play. They keep me up in wide awake while the rest of the world sleeps. And the hardest thing to do is quit. That right there is fire. Man, I love y'all for that, man. Yeah, that, that is a banger. That has such a strong message to it. Oh my God. And shout like out I to said, by Drew, man. He he did everything. The chord progression and all. Wrote it all just off of me singing it with the lyrics. He wrote it all. Wrote all the chord progression, riffs, drum pattern, everything. All in a day. We did all that in one day. It, it just it was just it came together. It was meant to come together the way that it did and the message is there the content is clear um and my favorite scene is the very the the one where me and dirty are in the car i feel like that's the best scene because it really paints a picture of our friendship the d-boy and the addicts friendship building and growing and mm -hmm. seeing like man like i really don't i really don't care about what you're going through because 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 this is my job i gotta do this i have to do this for my family to take care of them so you you know you feed them my family but then like we make so many transactions together that me and Dirty start to connect. And then, you know, we're, we're laughing and joking. And then, you know, you just start to see it in his face where he's just like, man, I hate doing it to this dude. But it just paints the picture so perfectly, man. That oh, it's, it's definitely well, well acted out, well performed. The lyrics was on point. The vocals was on point. There's nothing to find wrong with that song. Nothing. And if anybody ever says there is, then they're just need to go get check their hearing and get Jesus in their life because they're whack. Definitely appreciate that, man. Like that, I feel that like right it's there. The type is of just, song that, it's awesome. How could you hate it? You know, exactly. yeah, how could you hate a song like that? It, just, it wouldn't make any sense to have hate for a song like that. When it comes to so many like, people going through it. Well, when it comes to messaging, flush and reality hits right now is on point i think those two songs need to get out there everybody needs to share those videos get it in people's hands who need that help and maybe it'll turn somebody's life around appreciate that so much i really do i think that i every every night when i lay my head down i go to sleep some, you know it's hard to go to sleep with uh nightmare terrors you know what i'm talking about like oh, it's yeah. hard to go to sleep your, your head's just running but before I lay my head down and really close my eyes and go to sleep, finally, um, and usually I watch Adam's family, the old black and white Adam's family, to go to sleep. It really brings me down to a calm level. Um, but uh, before I do, I always pray and I always thank God, like, thank you for letting me be one of the, the elements and the tools to, to help save so many. Because it's so hard to reach the ones so close to me, like, I have so uh, it's so hard for me to reach the ones with my music that are so close to me, like family members and really close friends. I can't reach them, but it's reaching so 
so so far vast of the majority of other people with the with the messages I get and it's like I know I'm doing good and so I'm grateful for it even though I'm experiencing so much pain because I can't reach the ones that are so close to me I know that I'm saving others and as and as long as that message is getting sent and it's it's, it's hitting people that need to hear it or or watch the video man I'm happy I can't be upset I can't be mad at anything going on um and uh I think that you know I'm hoping that maybe maybe one day that uh the message will get to those that are real close to me and uh a it lot will. of this this stuff can can come to an end but uh until then I'm just going to keep pushing the message and I know that Outlaw Nation is going to continue to do so and so will Black Sheep Family Entertainment yeah um because we've all been through it and I think that's what makes it so easy for us all to talk about it because we've all been through it so uh thank you so much flush is just i every i just think about it all the time man i should have flushed it you know how many people yeah how many people the how many what people if think game. that way yeah you're right yeah well look now i really appreciate you coming here and chop it up with me um i am going to take about 30 minutes of, of your time up here tonight and put it on the dog pound channel I like a, a short somewhat of an interview but it's not an interview it's just basically chopping it up with each other but i do have to get off here as i gotta get up and go go to work early oh but no I worries man thank you for your time <laughs> i appreciate you coming up here and chopping up with me and like i said if you need anything you got my number reach out to me and i'll do whatever i can to help you well dude man i'm glad i got to uh to actually sit down and because we've been talking about it you know and you glad i got to sit down and finally reach out to you and, and everybody, the Triple T and Dog Pound family, and uh, actually have some good conversation time with you. And uh, again, man, thank you so much for everything that you do for all of us, especially all of us at Outlaw Nation. We're, we're so grateful for it. And we love you for it, man. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate that. But look, folks, I'm going to put the link of that song in the chat. Please go over there and click on it. That way you can get straight to his page. Subscribe to him if you're not subscribed to him. Make sure you hit that notification bell, that notification button. That way you know whenever he drops a video. Tell him I sent you over, show him some love. I promise you, you won't regret. Because this young man right here, he's on the rise to the top. And you want to get on that train now before it gets out the station. So new breed, I mean, oh, ah, new breed. <laughs> now, I really appreciate you coming up and chopping up with me, man. But I'm going to go ahead and end this stream. So. I will catch you on the next one, okay, brother? 10 4, brother. Much love. Y'all stay you. All Rise right. Up and salute. There you go. All right, Triple T, y'all know the deal. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Love your family. Love your neighbors to include your friends. Do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. And as always, God bless you and God bless America. This is Tim with your Triple T live stream. Remember, this is not my channel. This is your channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Y'all have a blessed day, and I'll see you on the next one. On the back roads where the alligators crawl in the swamp land, we ain't worried.